folks, I'm the bald guy, and these are bald guy basics. Today I'm going to do a video that I have been avoiding, uh, not because it's unneeded, but because I am not an expert. However, I do think that I've gained enough experience, at least to service my own saws. Today we're going to be talking about sharpening your chainsaw. Now, I started like everybody else. I started with a uh, just a, a chainsaw file. There are some things you're going to need to know about sharpening your chainsaw. The first is the pitch of your saw, um, the teeth, the size of the teeth, because not any old saw will, uh, any old file will work. So everybody started with these, and if that's all you've got, uh, I'm going to try to help you with that. A little bit further down the road, I picked up one of these. This is a saw with a built-in, uh, I'm sorry, a file with a built-in guide. And if you look closely there, and I know the angle of reflection will affect it, you'll see some diagonal marks. They will give you uh, angled marks so that you can hold your file at the correct angle. With these, which is what everybody had, it was a real work of art to sharpen your chain. You had to learn um, how to gauge the angle that you want, as well as keeping that angle consistent. And for me, I had to learn which part of the of the chain, of the tooth of the chain, to actually file. I'm going to recommend, especially if you're starting out, get yourself a paint marker. These are by Sharpie. These are silver. I find the silver to be pretty visible for me. I've also got a white one. I'll often throw one of these into my saw toolbox so that when I'm in the woods, um, I can see where to start and stop. I mark one link in my chain and then I start behind that and when I go all the way around and I get to the link in front of that mark, I know I'm done. You turn the saw around and do the other side. Uh, so a, a marker with a bright color, not a dark color. Now, a lot of the modern chains do have uh, a colored link and if you've got that, that's great, but I even find sometimes they're hard to find. So you're going to need that. I'm also going to flip the camera around and, and look directly at the saw to show what I'm doing uh, about which part of the tooth that you need to, um, to sharpen. You know, if you look at a tooth, there's the top, which is the actual cutting surface. So when you're running your file, which I'm going to use this because it's bigger, when you're running your file on, you're actually sharpening this top edge. But in this curve, it also is hit by the file. And I used to think when I started out, I thought, well, that's the part that's biting because it's the part that I could see. So learning to hold it tight, not against this inner curve, but against the top of the tooth was integral for me. And a, a link is made up of two parts. You have your cutting tooth and then a tooth which are, is called a lot of different things. It's called a drag tooth, a raker, a lot of different things. Whatever you want to call it, it's a depth gauge. So you have your tooth, and then you have this little triangle tooth in front of it. So when you sharpen the edge of your cutting tooth, the more you sharpen it, the more it backs down. And if you're not sharp, um, grinding down those drag teeth, those depth gauges, your, your blade will stop cutting. So I am going to recommend to you, I don't know what they call this other than the steel chainsaw file set. Um, these come with two files, two round files, so that you can file the left side of your chain and the right side without ha ever having to change the file. And in the middle here, you have a flat file. This thing is already set to the proper depth. So as you're raking over your cutting teeth, the flat file is hitting the drag teeth at the same time. It is marked to show you the proper angles. So I never use these anymore. I never, ever, ever use these anymore for sharpening file. If there's another application, well, that's another matter. But I've got one of these for each of my saws so that they have the proper diameter of file in it. And it has changed sharpening a saw for me to be what was a, a when I say dangerous, not dangerous in that I was going to get cut, but dangerous in that I was going to ruin a, a chain into a very productive and useful tool. So now I, without any expert training, am able to sharpen my saws so that they go back to cutting true, to cutting uh, with, uh, with uh, appropriately, cutting uh, without trouble. Literally a few years ago, 
I would buy a new chain. A new chain for my saw was plus or minus 22 bucks. Not, well, I was I started cutting a lot of wood when I was out of work. I was between jobs, so $22 was not inconsequential, but it was not $200 either. And I would cut as long as I could on that chain without touching it, and then I would do light touch-ups. And again, I told you, I was cutting it the wrong way. I'm not an expert. I was, I was filing it the wrong way. And my chain, I might get it a little better, but then it would wear down. And I get a little better. I never got it back to where it should be. And I, I was sharpening with the wrong point in my focus. And I was not keeping a consistent angle. How I sharpened it today would differ from how I sharpened it tomorrow in terms of the angle. And I just didn't know any better. This, I think these are like $45 plus or minus uh, at a steel dealership uh, where I bought them. And they have made all the difference. And now I, I get, the amount of time I get out of an of a individual chain is now multiplied by five times. And that's, that's an arbitrary number. Uh, where I would use a, a blade for a few weeks and go get another chain, I now use chains for seasons, two, three, four seasons before I, uh, one has been filed down small enough. The other um, sharpening system that I will talk about is the grinding wheel sharpening system. I had one of those. I bought one from Harbor Freight. I got it for $25, and it works kind of. Um, it will sharpen each saw, and they are adjustable. And what I ended up doing is finding a, a, an angle for the chain that I wanted, and I ended up sharpening every chain to that angle. Well, new from the factory, those chains didn't always have that same angle, but you got to choose one. So I had all my saws at the same angle, and I forget what it was. It was 28, 29 degrees, something like that, just shy of 30 degrees. Um They worked, but they did not give me as satisfactory results as the steel sharpening system. So let me make some changes here in my setup, and then we'll actually demonstrate the sharpening of a saw. The other thing I'm going to say, uh, you professionals are going to tell me that I should have my chainsaw mounted on a vise. You may be right, but I don't have a stump vise, and I'm not interested in getting one. Um, I found that once I learned to sharpen my saw appropriately, I sharpen it in the shop the same way I'm going to sharpen it in the field. If I hit something in the field and I dull it, I'm going to be sharpening it on the tailgate of the truck or, or sitting down on a, a log. And I've learned with this guide, I can be consistent enough that I don't have to buy and to carry with me an extra piece of equipment. So here in the shop, we're going to be sitting on the bench and I'm going to be uh, the saw is going to be sitting still. The one thing I do insist on doing for my own purposes, uh, and I learned this the hard way, I will be wearing safety gloves while I sharpen that. Uh, when I'm done, the tip of these teeth are quite sharp, and I've noticed that with a one little neglectful movement, uh, I end up with a bloody finger. Uh, but gloves help that a lot. So let's change our setup so that you can watch the actual sharpening of the saw, and we'll see how it works. All right, we're back down here looking at the blade. I've got my steel 021 saw. It has a 3 8 three eighths inch pitch. The first thing I'm going to do, let me shake up my paint marker, is choose a link. It does not matter. And I mark the inside of the link. I mark the outside of the link on the sides. I'm also going to mark the top of the link. I just I put the paint on here so that I can see that I'm not hiding what I'm doing from myself. Um, by the way, if you're wondering, this wears off in about 15 seconds of actual saw time. But marking the sides, I find to give me a greater visibility. So what I typically do, the way this thing works, it has two directions on it. And you're going to put see it down here just I know this the blades in the way but let me move the saw here for a minute the way this thing works you're going to have your round file in the back and then your flat file will be striking the the depth gauge in front of it so on one side I'm going to be cutting in this direction 
and when I move the chain to do the other side, I simply flip this thing over. So get your saw oriented. Let me get my gloves on. And let me have a pointing device here. I'm getting up close on purpose. We're sharpening the underside of this angled edge. The curve that you see here, that's incidental. Uh, that gets uh, a place for the shaving to be kicked out, but that's not what you're sharp sharpening. So you're sharpening the underside of this leading edge and As you look down on it, as I am, I'm looking straight down on it, This thing, you'll realize as I turn this how vital this angle is. What I want, I wish I had a sharper, I need a nail or something. I want to sharpen that until I have just about a point right there. And this one is actually ground off. I've got a good point back here, pretty good point here, but I don't have a straight edge on these teeth. Uh, I work these saws and I work them until... I don't sharpen them every single stroke or every single tank full. That's people ask how often should you sharpen your saw? I heard one you know guy that's more expert than I. He said I touch mine up every time I add fuel to the saw. Well, these are relatively small saws. They're not huge saws, so um, I, I don't find any loss of cutting over several tank fulls. Uh, I start sharpening the saw when I see a difference in the shavings that are coming out of the saw, or I see that the saw is cutting um, to the left or to the right. So, typically speaking, let me back away here. I'm going to find my angle. Turn this thing around in the proper direction. And it's got arrows on it, but I always... And there we go. So what I have here, I've got my round file that is fitting inside the tooth, my flat file sitting on top of the depth gauge, and there are two marks here. And you simply line up your bar with these two marks. And when you do that, I, I, this is why I use gloves. I grip the saw and I count the number of strokes that I'm going to make. And what I'm doing, I'm pushing back into the tooth. So I'm going to start on my painted tooth. One, two, three, Four. That tooth is broke, so I'm going to give just a slight additional stroke. So that, that got a fifth stroke. Not everyone will get a fifth stroke. Might help to uh, release the brake. Then I just move. You're doing every other stroke because every other tooth is facing the opposite direction. So I'll do half of them from this side. I get my angle straight, and then I push my, saw, my file back into that tooth and what I'm looking for is this curved face of the tooth to end up being straight all the way across one two three four five I, I use this blade it's it's pretty worn one, two three four five one two three four five the bar guides between the files actually help control the depth that I cut the rakers. By the way, you may not see this, but I'm, as I put the, the file into this, I'm actually torquing it so that I'm pushing it up against the inside of this tooth a little bit to get accurate on the top of that tooth one. That tooth has a nick in it as well. See my colored link, my painted link, so I know I'm done on this side because I know that's the one I started with. Now I simply turn my saw around. Let me change my, my camera angle. Turn it 
turn my saw around, I find my painted link. Now this time, what I'm going to do, I'm going to start, here's my painted link. I'm going to start here, then I'm going to index the saw back in that direction. So when my painted link appears, I'll be done. I turn my tool over, I get my marks lined up. Got to have your. Now I know that actually fit on the tooth, but I'm I'm moving in the wrong direction. So I want there we go. I want my flat file hitting the rakers, and that was not the way I did. So get my angle right. Some tooth are more damaged than others. Some teeth. I always find interesting. You see how quick this is? By the way, on this side, it's really easy for me to put my thumb against this and to push it back into my tooth, which gives me extra uh, friction. Get on there. Two, three, four, five. You will feel the tooth clean up. You will feel the friction change. That's when I know to do an extra, an extra stroke or two, and there's my painted link. So one more. Now, let me get down here where you can see me. Oh, I, could, I could just raise the camera up. Very unprofessional grabbing the camera this way. What you have seen in, can I see on my, how long, it's been an eight minute video. I spent the first three or four minutes talking and in four minutes, I have sharpened both sides of a 16 inch saw. I chose the 16 inch because that was the short one. So with this, I went from uh, at best a novice sharpener who probably did as much harm as good. I could knock off a burr off of a, a teeth, but Every time I, I sharpened this thing, I'm guessing when I was using the rat tail file. Every time I used this, I was guessing at my angle. My eyesight's not good, so usually when I'm in the woods, I'm not wearing my, my reading glasses, which is what these are. I have, um, I'm farsighted. So up close, everything was blurry, and I was in trouble. Um, and I noticed I'd sharpen a saw, and I'm like, gee, it's not any better. Or I was getting curves, which means I was sharpening at two different angles from left to right. Once I bought one of these, I've got two different saw pitches with my different size saws. I bought one of them, 45 bucks. I wanted to make sure it worked before I spent money on the other one. And the first time I had such remarkable results, I had what was basically a chain that cut like new. Uh, I could not tell a, an appreciable difference. Over months and even years of use, I, I can tell my saws a little it's just got a little less meat on the teeth, but I'm still getting good results and nearly new chains with no extra training. I'm just following the guide, and this thing is perfect. So if you have a chainsaw that you um, are not comfortable sharpening, if you're having results that are not pleasing to you, they're not uh, effective in terms of returning a chain to pretty well new condition, Go, take your saw with you. You don't have to, uh, man, I, I don't know all these numbers, pitch and angle and all this stuff. I, I walk in my steel dealership and I say, hey, I've got this model of, of chain. I need the correct filing um, system for it. And what you'll see here is I took my pen, since I've got two of these things and they look identical. I took my pen and I wrote which saw this, uh, this serves so in really big letters so I can see it in the field. And it has made a tremendous difference. I have been in the field cutting and hit a rock or something and ruining a chain and file and file and go back and try. Can't cut. File and file and file some more. 
I can't cut or can't cut effectively, I should say. And I, I just quit, go back to the store and buy a new chain. This has changed that. It saves me money. It saves me time. It makes my saws that much more effective. And when I've done reviews of the saws that some of you have been very complimentary about, I, I just want to tell you, I, I touch them up with this thing beforehand and it makes all the difference in the world. So if you want a chainsaw sharpening system that is no gimmick to it, you don't have to plug it in. It I keep they came in a plastic sheath, and I keep mine just slide it right down in the sheath. I did cut the end of this thing off where it folded over, because that thing had a tendency to bend. Slides it down in there. It fits right in my chainsaw toolbox. Uh, it fills it up because um, I have a short toolbox, but it's with me every time I go to the field, and it will make your chainsaw sharpening experience a pleasure. You will know exactly what to do and how to do it because all of the markings are on here to tell you the correct uh, angle at which to grind your the tooth on your chain. And it automatically cuts the depth gauge, uh, which you have the big tooth here. Oh, you can't see me. I'm, I'm behind it. Let me get something to pull this is the part we are sharpening because that's the parting and that part right in front of it, that's the depth gauge. If you, and that's the other problem I had for years, even when I got better at sharpening with a rat tail file, I didn't realize that I also have to cut those depth gauges down. So effectively, I thought my chain was just wearing out because my cuts, each individual piece of, uh, of um, sawdust, we'll call it, the, each shaving got smaller and smaller. It's because my depth gauge was getting taller and taller and I, my cutting surface just couldn't get bite into the wood. And once I figured that out, I'm like, wow, <laughs> why didn't somebody tell me this long ago? I hope this helps you. Um, it will help you to get better use out of your saws and to feel better about the effort you're making. So this is the bald guy. These are bald guy basics and I hope this helps you. Mm -hmm.